my name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to censor out someone's face or blur out someone's face using the tools built into Final Cut Pro 10. So I've got a clip here. This is from a 4th of July parade in Niles, Illinois. And we've got some pretty cool guys here on motorcycles, and we're just going to censor out a couple of their faces here. So how do we do that? Well, I've already went ahead and I've grabbed my clip and I've dropped it into my timeline. And now that it's in my timeline, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my filters and effects. That's this button right here. It's also Command-5. And under my filters and effects, I'm just gonna look for Sensor. And right away I can see there it is. And by the way, in case you didn't know this or if you're new to Final Cut, any time that you're on any effect, uh, it will give you a preview of that effect if you just hover over it. So as an example here, if I just uh, hover over this 50s TV, uh, you can see that's what it's done. And uh, it's that's pretty much exactly what it's like being in Niles, Illinois. All right. So I'm just going to search for my sensor because I don't know exactly which folder it is right now, but I do know it is called sensor. And in fact, there it is right here. And I'm going to drag that onto my clip. Now that I've dragged onto my clip, you can see that it wants to render here. That's what this little red line is. And if I don't do anything in Final Cut in just a couple seconds, my background renderer will start kicking on, and there it is. And so let's take a look at this sensor. So right now I just have this pixelated mess in the center of the screen. If I want to adjust anything in any of my effects or in my placed videos, I'm going to want to come over here to my inspector. And my inspector is right over here. It's this button right here, Command-4. And as soon as I click that, it opens up the inspector. Notice I have three tabs here. I have video, audio, and info. If I go to a clip that is just audio, and I drop that into my timeline, notice I don't have a video tab here. Makes sense. So I'm going to undo that here, click back on my clip, and let's take a look at what's going on here. So the first thing you'll notice is I have this Effects tab. And under my Effects tab, I've got Sensor. What I want to do is take this center and this radius. So I'm just going to go to a point in my clip where I want to start blurring him out. We're going to do this first guy right here. And I'm just going to put my playhead there. And I'm going to drag this puck over to his face. And I'm going to just pull down this ratio. And we just want to get that covered up here. Notice we have an amount. And I have some different methods. I can take this and pull this back. And maybe if I take this to 20, that's a little bit better than how blocky it was here at 100. Otherwise, I can just blur this. And blurring it should work fine for me here, too. Now, if I play this back, here's what's going to happen. Notice that blur stays there. Well, if I want this blur to follow my motorcycle guy here, my Shriner, I've got to place it on here, and then I've got to set some keyframes. So keyframes are ways to set specific parameters at specific times. Anywhere in my inspector, you'll notice I've, if I'm rolling up and down there, you'll notice if I'm rolling up or down my inspector here, I've got these little pluses in these diamonds. What this will do is set a keyframe. So for me right now, I'm going to set this on center, and it turns red. Now, what that means is it's waiting for their instructions. So if I take my timeline back, I'll skip 10 frames holding on to shift and pressing the left arrow key. And now it's jumped back 10 frames. And I'm just going to drag this back onto his face. When I do that, though, we're going to get another keyframe pop up because it is now traveling from one point to another. And I'll move back another 10 frames just to hover over his face. And I'm just moving 10 frames at a time, again, holding on to shift and pressing left just to cover up this guy's face. And every time I'm moving it, now that I've set that first keyframe, it's going to continue making keyframes if I make any changes. It automatically knows, okay, I'm changing something. 
let's go ahead and record those properties. So what's happening now is this puck center is at negative 05 pixels on the X and 0.09 pixels on the Y at six frames. And I'll just go back to the very beginning here at zero frames. And now if I play that back, it should follow him. Now it'll stop here. Why? Because I don't have any further keyframes past this point. Now, how do I see my keyframes? Because here I've got this little icon and I can jump between my keyframes using these little arrows, but that's pretty inconvenient and I can't really see exactly where my keyframes are. So if I go to my clip here and I'm going to right click onto my clip and I'm going to show video animation. And here you can see I've got some animation here. It's a little hard to see, so I'm going to zoom in on my timeline here. And now I can see where my keyframes are. I can see the amount, the radius, the center, and that's what I'm clicking here. And now those are my keyframes. And if I hover over them, you can see I can drag them at different points in time. And now I can keep going further. So again, I'll start from here, hold on to shift, press right, and grab that center and just plop it on there. Once I'm done, I'm just going to drag it off my scene there, and it can it can stay there. So now, as I play this back, he should be fully covered. So that's the way to censor someone's face or a logo or a building on anything from footage that's moving. If it's not moving, we don't have to worry about that in our animation. If I wanted to automatically track it, Motion VFX makes a great plugin called M Sensor that does a lot of this tracking for you. So I would just have to put down a point and say track the footage and it would just stay locked onto his face. It is developed using Mocha, which I have used before in different tutorials but with my sign replacement. So I just want to do a shout out to Motion VFX. They do great products. Uh, I don't get any kickbacks or anything from them, so I'm not selling their stuff, but I do recommend checking them out if you are going to be blurring out people's faces often. So there you go. My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta, and if you have any other further questions or concerns or looking to learn Final Cut, Premiere, After Effects, Mocha, Element 3D, check out my website, www.stanislawrobertliberta.com, where I offer training and more tutorials. Thanks for watching.